it is a great privilege to be here at BET today talking to you as a teacher. So thank you, ViewSonic, for allowing me to come and gate crash a tech company, somebody who's not particularly technological. But I'm hoping today I'll give you some great ideas about how you can use technology and in particular panels with the children that you are working with. So my name is Alison Lydon. I'm the senior deputy head at ESMS in Edinburgh. So I've traveled all this way. So you really need to come and support me and come and listen because I've spent a lot of time thinking about this for all of you. Now I have been in, in education for a very long time. So I'm hoping that some of the um, mistakes that I've made in the past will be, um, I'll be able to share some of my wisdom with you. So my main topic today is talking about bridging the gap between technology and education. And this is something that I'm really passionate about, having worked in education for such a long time. And it's really harnessing your power as an educator and understanding how using different technology is important, but the pedagogy behind it is also really critical. Now, this is where I admit uh, my first bet was in um, 1994. So I've been coming along here for a very long time. And on the screen here, you can see some of the technology that I took back to my very first school. So I've got my Acorn A3000, my bubble jet printer, and a really cool bit of software called Betsy. Now, for those of you who are way younger than me, Betsy is all about uh, exploring a Tudor environment. Yeah, we didn't even teach Tudors in my school, but it was such a cool bit of software that I just had to buy it. I was really engaged with the, wow, how cool is that? And I just went around looking for the best, coolest things that I possibly could. So if we fast forward a little bit to about the 2000, 2005s, I'd moved up to Scotland and I was still really keen on technology and using that in education, but it was more about solving problems. How could I get children to code? I knew coding was really important. So I didn't quite know why, but I just knew it was. So we got Bebots. How could we record what we were doing on field trips and compare and contrast leaves in different um, seasons? We could use digital cameras. How could we develop fine motor skills as well as gross motor skills? We could get children to use panels um, and draw on them. So it was still very much about the problem solving rather than any research. Well, that's where technology has moved on to now and where education is. It's looking about the pedagogy behind what we're doing and working out what tech we're using and why we're using it. So I'm sure you'll recognize some of those books there, some quite prolific, uh, prolific writers that are uh, very much in the education research market at the moment. So that's what we're gonna be looking at when your role in enabling technology, but really giving that, that creative teaching element and linking it with the precision of technology and seeing the magic that happens when those two collide. So it's moving from ed tech to ped tech. And what I'm gonna do in the next sort of five, 10 minutes is talk you through some examples of using classroom management and looking at how relationships in classroom management can be enhanced with technology. A little bit about lesson planning and delivery. Again, how can the pedagogy behind those be enhanced with technology? And because there are loads of teachers here, little teacher tools at the end, a little bonus if we get time. And you know, being on you, Sonic, it would be wrong for me not to really focus on something that is so huge in education, um, that workforce, which is the panel. So lots of what I'm gonna talk about is about panel technology and that pedagogy behind it. So I mentioned that dilemma of classroom relationships um, and classroom management. So something that we look at um, and is really pivotal in my school are relationships. So we've spent a lot of time looking at our relationship policy, reading Paul Dix, and understanding which elements of behavior support we really want to bring in to our classrooms. And you, we, we all know that those relationships are really important and I'm not gonna read those out because you all know the benefits of a really great education relationship between the teachers and the children. But what my staff were saying is, well, how can I do a brilliant welcome in the morning? How can I greet each child, speak to them personally, 
but I've got all the other routines to set up. The children need to know what to do each day. I can't do the two things. Well, that's where the panel comes in. So I've put Impact up there. That's a really great um, research magazine from the Chartered College of Teachers. If you're not used to that, then that's lots of research about why routines are important too. But here is where that panel technology comes in. So the children are being greeted. They're having those momentful moments with the teachers, making eye contact, catching up about what happened the night before. But once they've had that, then they're in and they know exactly what to do next. So on the board every morning, and this is for uh, a primary two group, so that's about year three, they know exactly what the visual timetable is for the day. They know what the starter activity is. They can come in and get going. And rather than the teacher having to tell every single child to 30 times what's for lunch, then we pop a picture up there as well. So the children can come in, get going with what they need to, having had that really great welcome from the teacher. So it's a super simple way of using the panel to enhance what you're doing based on technology and the research behind. Now obviously bread and butter for teachers is lessons and lesson planning. And at school, we're really keen on looking at Rosenstein's principles of instruction and looking at, at how that sort of ties together with everything that we do. And what's great about Rosenstein is it's not just thought about the um, cognitive science of brain development and learning, but he's also thought about case studies and he's also looked at the research. So by tying those three things together, we know we're on a winner. But we also know it's really well supported out there, loads of resources. And one of the key elements of Rosenstein's principles is reviewing things at the beginning of a lesson. And he's proven that with eight minutes of uh, review at the beginning of a lesson, then the, um, the brain development and the retention is, is greatly improved. And that's not just for uh, maths lessons, but that's for language lessons as well. So why would we not want to, to use that magic of reviewing lessons, uh, reviewing learning at the beginning? And that's where that panel technology comes in again. So there are so many ways that as a teacher, you can review what you've been doing and use those seven minutes, those eight minutes really wisely to recap and to move that uh, brain development on and move that retention of information on. If you've saved everything on your um, panel software, then you can just screenshot that from last lesson and bring it back again. You can capture everything that you're doing as you're going through. You could have a worked example that you've already used. So because you can save everything on your software, you can just bring it back again. And if an example like this, you might then use some of the polling techniques as well. And if you don't know about some of the polling techniques, just pop around the corner afterwards and you can have a look at the, how you can throw something, how you can have a pop quiz, how you can do different polls as well. And so I can just very quickly, three clicks of a button, pop out a slide to my, ch my children in my class, and get the answer back. And I don't even have to let them know if they were right or wrong. I can keep that anonymous and go, right, I know what you can do. I know what you can't do. And then I've still got the rest of the lesson to work with the children. I could use a recap of lots of bits of information and again, get them to throw me the answers. And because it's not just multiple choice, which is really limiting, you get them to write something, then you've got all their ideas and that data captured. You could even ask them to do a different, um, show a different skill. So it might be that you were teaching perimeter the week before, and today, right, we want to recap. Who can remember how to find the perimeter of a polygon? So there's a little video here as well of some of the children at school using the panel um, in a way that the teacher couldn't do. They're recapping their sounds. The teacher can only turn the cards so fast. The fastest teacher was managing to do it in about one and a half seconds but the panel can do it in one second. So the children are sitting there. The teacher can now be watching those children, watching their engagement, watching who can do what, um, and the, the sounds are turning over faster than the teacher can do. So there they go, that's pretty fast. And if you're trying to say those out loud, that's the speed that the children can work on because the panel is giving us something that the, that the teacher can't physically do, but then is freeing up that teacher to watch how the children are interacting with those different sounds. So as well as the reviewing at the beginning of a lesson, 
We also need to think about the main part of that lesson, where teachers are modeling, where they're scaffolding, and where they're supporting. And where we are, we think about that as the I do, the teacher does, and then the class does, and then the child does. The I do, we do, you do. And so you can see examples here of how that panel will be used with all the different objects to be manipulated throughout that lesson. So what's great about the software is that you can put coins in and then you can drag those coins multiple times. And as a teacher, you know, I can be standing here showing the children what to do and helping them to understand. And then I can be inviting children to come up and then scaffolding that. And then I can let them do something independently. So it really works well for that phase of a lesson. And then once the children are working on that element independently, don't forget that you can stick things up on that panel for children to be supported all the way through. Are there key questions that you want to have there ready for the children? Are there activities that you want children to collaborate with on that panel so that they can come up and do things? So lots of different ways of using that panel to be doing the I do, we do, you do. Now, obviously, as a teacher, you're checking for understanding throughout. And the research shows us that if you keep checking for understanding and get those misconceptions sorted out really quickly, then the learning is intensified and there's more impact for what you're doing. So we used quite a lot of research from Hattie, um, sharing these walkthroughs and Rosenstein's principles to have lots of different ways of doing that recap, that reviewing, checking for understanding throughout. And again, I've urged you, if you haven't seen some of the polling options on the software, pop around the corner because you're getting that information, you're saving that um, and able to capture lots of, lots of data as a teacher. So this is what it looks like. I can just, in three clicks, pop that up right on there really quickly. And I haven't had to prepare that question beforehand because I'm checking for the understanding of what I've taught in that lesson. And I might not have got to where I wanted to. So I can pop that question up, QR code for the children to scan, they reply, and as they reply, all the children's um, sort of responses apply there. If I were to click on one, that reply is visible to everybody, and it's hidden at the moment. You know, I want to make my room a psychologically safe space for the children, so I don't want to be naming and shaming, but I'll probably already know who I want to check on, and I can do that potentially on my own laptop and see if it's a good answer, or in public. And this is one of the slightly more, um, I was to say complicated, but nothing is very complicated, but more powerful drilling down ways of getting some of that information back from children. So remember, you really need to check and review that information. If, if it's not gone in, then you're not going to move on. But, you know, not all lessons are the same. And I've spoken at quite at length about some of the instructional types of lessons, but not everything should be that form of lesson. And Tom Sherrington looks very much at mode A and mode B teaching, and where that slightly richer environment can be used as well. So different environments, different media coming in, and that active exploration. And you may have noticed that the backdrop of all of my slides so far have been some of my children exploring the International Space Station, where they could work in pairs and really have a little bit of freedom to see, wow, what do I want to find out about? Give them the impetus and that motivation to find out, to compare and contrast. So moving on from that, you'll, we've also started to use VR for that as well. So deviating slightly from the panel, but modeling things on the panel first, and then going into slightly more depth with VR. And if you want to know more about VR class, um, VR are over there, and three of my colleagues from school are talking about the VR side of things that we do. But using the panel together is really powerful um, to start with. So just a few shortcuts for teachers as well, because it's, if there are any of you are teachers, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a busy time at the moment, isn't there? And there's quite a lot of workload on all of us. So bear in mind that you can share and reuse things. So we have a, a platform called Firefly, the teachers make things. I'm lucky that I've got multiple teachers in a year group. So they're all divid, all the different lessons are divid out and they create that structure. But because with the panels, everything's so flexible, 
You're not worrying about, oh, my class is slightly different to that class. I want to go a little bit faster or slower or use different things because you're looking for that, that sort of basic backbone to be created. And then as a teacher, you can bring things in and out and move things around as you need. So sharing and making is really important. And then reusing year after year. Yes, things change. Yes, you want to adapt. Yes, you want to be flexible, but start not from the beginning every single time. And the fact that you can edit things to bring in new things as you find them is really important. I've written down questions there because if you're anything like me, you sometimes get to the end of a lesson and think, well, I really want some great questions, but I can't think of anything that's really you know, um, diving a little bit deeper into questioning. So you can have those just off the side, bring them on and have questions ready. But when you're sort of getting a little bit of a brain fog, um, a little bit like I am at the moment. There are also some top tools as well. So spinners that choose names, you know, the children sometimes say, oh, I never get chosen. Well, here's a way of making things really fair. But don't also think that spinners and name pickers have to be used for children's names. It could be looking at different elements of a lesson. Sometimes we have all the different plenaries put around here and we spin the wheel and see what sort of plenary we're gonna give the children. Um, and one of them will press the button and it makes them feel a little bit more involved a little bit of sort of excitement at the end of a lesson. Oh, what's it going to be today? Rather than the teacher directing everything. Again, tools like drag and drop. So whether it's coins that are endlessly droppable and movable, or blocks, or words, or shapes, lines, anything that you can think of, different images, could all be used. So you could use that for exit interviews. You could use it for a more of a maths example here. You could use it to create things voting, so lots of different ways of dragging and using different tools. And in the ViewSite software, um, really, I mean, you can straight away see what all those tools are. Loads of really useful ones, different purposes, depending on different ages. Things like the dice is really great for some mental maths for younger children. At the end, all I really want to leave you with is that message that you know, don't be swayed by those tools out there that are just so exciting. What you need to think about is what is the pedagogy behind those tools? What are they really going to add to your classroom? Nothing in this hall is cheap. So if you're going to be spending your money, you need to spend it wisely. And you need to spend it on something that's going to give you power in the classroom. So that was my roundup. It was use that teacher head. Don't get swayed by the, the gimmicks and the gadgets as I did 30 years ago. Be strategic. Think about, will this work in my school? It's not good buying something that isn't gonna be able to be supported by your IT guys. So if you're a teacher here, speak to your IT guys. If you're IT guys, speak to the teachers because if you don't work together, you're not gonna make impact. And then make sure that there's that pedagogy motivating everything you do. Because if you don't do that, you're not gonna have that magic that happens and that impact. And I'm sure that every single person here, that's what we're all aiming for, that impact in the classroom. So. Thank you for stopping by this afternoon. Remember, around the stand, there are lots of different ways that you can see some of this in action. And thank you for listening.